Hey, congratulations on your new documentary, Sister Una. Lived a good life. Lived a good death. Oh, lived a good death. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't live a good life as well, but I think it's it's more telling about what the movie's about that she lived a good death. Um, but thank you very much for the congratulations. It's been a long time coming. We've been making this for six years and very excited to share it with the world finally. Yeah, most excellent. And it's also uh, being shared through the PBS's uh, independent lens. Uh, uh, tell us how you feel in, uh, about that. Uh, are you kidding? I, I don't think we could have asked for a better fit than independent lens. First of all, you know, making documentaries in America is in a lot of ways a thankless job. You just work your butt off. It's always passion projects. And there isn't there aren't that many kind of uh, avenues of funding. And ITVS comes in, in you know, and they just were our champions from a very early stage. And that kind of saved the day. And then our dream was always independent lens. You, the audience that they reach, the passion, support and care they give to filmmakers is unbelievable. But I think the thing that really stands out to me about being on independent lens is just this network of people that believe in us and i can't tell you how important that is for this is a very scrappy documentary about something that means a lot to me and turns out to a lot of people death and dying and the fact that independent lens kind of took a risk on this scrappy little film means the world to me and my producing partner ali so how did this uh, documentary um came about what what birthed this documentary you know, it's funny. I, I moved to Los Angeles in 2015 and everyone there thought I was a guru um, because that's what happens in L.A. So I made a short film about my experiences as that called The Happy. And a, a friend who helped me with that film was Kelsey, who's in the film. Um, and Kelsey kept saying, I have to go help my dying nun friend plan her funeral. And that sentence stuck out in my mind. I go, that does not compute for me. What do you mean you're dying, nun friend? What do you mean plan your own funeral? And I, what started off as kind of a short film that's just meant to be a, a beautiful portrait of her became something richer and deeper as we spent more and more time with Sister Una. As you can tell, Sister Una is just so charming and so loving that you can't help but just want to sit in her presence and hear her stories and hear her take on things. So what started off as a small little short became this larger uh kind of deeper film that that is actually quite amazing she is quite a character um herself so how did you convince her to participate in this uh, film you know it i it's a good question the school of filmmaking i come from is less convincing and more being i just wanted to, to be very honest with her and i think we formed a friendship first and as you can tell, she understood, first of all, she's a, she is a hell of a storyteller and she can turn on the charm in a, in a second. And she's really good with these deep questions. So for me, it was kind of like, you know, I have these experiences with death. You have these experiences with death. We have these wonderful conversations together. Let's share this with the world. And part of her mission and ministry has always been to help people, especially kind of teenagers. She kind of takes angles on things that people don't um, often talk about and likes to bring them to the forefront. And as her last, you know, she wasn't able to do her mission in ministry. She wasn't able to work with the, the students that she worked with at the last year of her death. She goes, well, this is her last opportunity to kind of teach us something. And it's, it's a hell of a story, partly because she is the best messenger for this kind of difficult medicine, you know? Um, so convincing her was less convincing her and more just becoming close, honest, and intimate with, you know, with her as a, as a human, as a friend. Um, and we were able to then exchange, exchange those ideas because there was such a deep trust there, you know? So she wanted to share a certain message to the world because, uh, you know, Doing a document documentary or story about uh, death is is a little bit morbid, and to a lot of people, that's very private. You know, that's a and that's kind of what this movie wants to do because I think what happened was, especially in Western culture, and, and Sister Una and I talked about this quite a bit, is the notion that death is private got lumped up 
because everything in America is behind closed doors. You know, whether it's sex or death, we like to put it out there with, with movies and, and music and conversation, but really we don't talk about it in a deep manner. And what is by definition morbid, right? You're talking about death, that, that is morbid, doesn't have to be dark and full of fear. And I think that's why Sister Una is the best medicine for this because she's so funny. She's so approachable. She, even though she's a Catholic nun, I was, you know, raised Hindu and we connected on all these deep human levels. And you start to realize that, oh, this thing that is quote unquote morbid can be approached with like a childlike curiosity and wonder. And through conversation, we can really get somewhere deeper with it that is not just this base morbidity, but like an enlivening sense of what it means to actually live. So when did you uh, start following her and when um, and how did did you always intended to end it with with her funeral? Well, so that's that's interesting. Uh, you know, she I met her in March. Let me think. I think it was March 2018. And she passed away December 2018. And very, you know, and story wise, it made it the arc was clear. She, we spent some time with her and she passes away, but there was such an emotional um, arc that we wanted to capture as well. And we didn't want to make the audience feel like this was a will she or won't she make it movie. So that's why we started with the funeral. You know, we have an animated sequence and then the funeral comes right up top. So you see, oh, she's gonna, she's gonna die in this movie. That is actually gonna happen. So we're gonna learn the process of what it means to be alongside with her. And that was pretty early on. I think pretty early on when I was at the funeral, I go, we have to open with this. Just those students that come out at the school she was at, just outpouring their love and support and singing songs. I go, who is this? I thought I knew her. And she's so surprising that way, right? You think you know her. And then this one group of friends shows up and goes, I have a sister in a story. I still get these messages in from people who see it, the PBS uh, in the Independent Lens, the PBS book of what's come to come. They're like, I knew sister and I went to high school with her. She was the funniest. She was the best. And you realize, oh, then all these students come out and pour. It's like, I want to know who this woman is, you know? I, I know it, it is surprising because uh, it it when 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 anybody thinks of a nun they 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 wouldn't think of like Sister Una. That was the biggest kind of subtext we wanted to get across in this movie, right? Is like I had all these stereotypes. It turns out about nuns. I really thought that nuns were like from the movies. You know, again, I was raised Hindu. I'm you know Indian American was not really into religion so much, but she is everything I don't expect from a nun. And that made me question my own biases and my own um, kind of formed ideas of what something is. And you realize she, that's what makes her, again, a great messenger for kind of anything, because she's so human. And you realize what just because she's a nun and part of the Catholic Church doesn't mean that she kind of adheres to those principles that um, divide us. I found her to be one of the most unifying people I've ever met in my life. And she was a Catholic nun. So I hope this comes across in the movie too, this idea that she spent her life eschewing stereotypes. Um, and I hope you kind of get that from the movie that not, you know, the stereotypes, not only of what it means to be a nun, what it means to be someone spiritual, but what it, what it means to be someone who's dying and what death is itself. We all have all these ingrained ideas of what that is. Um, so just her being this badass nun really makes it that much easier to get this message from her. Does that make sense? Yes, absolutely. And, and I mean, the, uh, the organization sisters of the social service, you know what I've, I've, I've been to, uh, you know, I, I, I stay in, uh, Sherman Oaks, uh, just up the street in Encino and I had no idea about, about this, uh, this place. They're, they're so cool. I mean, and it, Sister Una turned us on to the Sisters of Social Service. And honestly, we went and we interviewed many of her friends there. And I, I'm going to like tear up thinking about some of them. They, you know, Sister Suzanne is in the movie and she's playing the harmonica and she, her laugh and her smile. And these women talk about eschewing stereotypes. They don't wear habits. And they were out there doing the work, working with teenagers, working with kids, working with women, working with those in need. 
And I'm like, wow, nuns can be cool. Who knew? <laughs> so how how do you uh, formulate your own time schedule on when to film her at, at, and at what moments? And that's a, a really good question. That was tricky because we, above anything, we just wanted to be respectful to her time and space. So it was when she was ready you know, she would call us up and she go, all right, I think I can talk today. Sometimes I'd be in the car and I just run over with a camera and, and just film her very quickly. And that's why the film feels like a series of conversations. Cause that's what it actually is. And we had talks pretty early on about what we could film. For instance, you know, it's very powerful. You see her in hospice and we asked her, who would you like to be there? Would you like us to be there? She goes, I want to make this as raw and honest as possible. So you have to be there um, for for the the final moments, but that obviously, as a filmmaker and a friend of hers, was difficult for me and for Ali, for the, our producer. Just we're there. We know this was the mission. We know this was what she wanted. We know that this was part of the story. But it's very emotional, and I think that's why um, you know this was the first time I've worked with other editors, and it was one of the greatest experiences of my life to have some distance from it and have some other people come in and help me shape the story in the way that it needed to be shaped. Um, because you really ultimately just want to be respectful for sister Una, sister Una at the end of the day, you know, and, and the things that she wanted in, and also be honest to what the feeling in the room always was. That's kind of the tricky part of being a, a filmmaker in these circumstances. Like, how do you be a friend? How do you be someone who's feeling these emotions as someone you love is passing away? And also, be responsible to the audience for capturing it in an honest way as well. And that was a really difficult balancing act. That's true. I was going to ask you about how you edited this film and what, what was actually left off the, uh, you know, the cutting board. There's, there's quite a bit left off. We have a couple, you know, the independent lens is the, the uh, 54 minute version. There is a director's cut, which is 72 that has some funny scenes cut out. Um, but there are all the, the structure of this was very, very tricky. And so, I remember when I first sat with uh, our second editor, Anne Rose, um, decided to eschew a traditional three-act structure and kind of tell it in seven movements because you know there are just these emotional beats. We some of those movements got trimmed down to just one shot or one scene, but we really wanted to make this a gentle ride for the audience because it's such a difficult topic and we didn't want to scare everyone off with it. So that line of how much time do we spend in hospice? Do we spend, a, how much is too much in exploitative? How much is too little and doesn't show the raw truth of it all? And that was all in the edit. I think in the independent lens version, you miss a couple of great jokes when I ask her, you know, what happens when uh, you die? And she answers it explicitly. She goes, she sings a Jackson Brown song. She goes, I don't know what happens when people die. And so powerful to hear a nun say that, that she doesn't know. You know, and then she says some. she has a funny line where she goes, I know there's something more and it's not Dianetics. Um, so she's always had a, a, a funny joke up until the end. Even then that's funny because she comes from an organization, the Catholic Church, which has its own issues, which she addresses as well. Um, but I think it was really necessary to remove a lot of those for the independent lens version, just so it, it flowed better as a for in an hour. You know, so you kind of get those bits that you you got. But man, she had there were two things. One, she had so many gems. It was hard to cut a lot of them out Two, it was really tricky to. Um, to be true and honest within a time frame that can hold an audience's attention, if that makes sense, because the original assembly was three hours long, but that was really boring, you know. Oh, hey, kitty. <laughs> um, so I think, you know, I, I think that's it's 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 really tricky to edit movies in general. But this one was particularly tricky because there was just so much good material. But here's the other thing I would say is we didn't shoot a crazy amount because we just had these limited time with her. Most of them were just conversations. We just had long conversations and we were just kind of string them together. So the edit was a crucial, crucial point of like finding what the story is, what the what the beats we want to hit are. There's so many funny stories that don't make any cut where 
Um, for instance, all of her stories is a mischievous child. We got a couple of them in there, but we have so many of her when she was in high school. She made she was really upset that the boys' basketball team was getting all the attention and no one would write up about the girls' basketball team. So she made the newspaper write about them. She also got all of the boys' basketball team to come during a girls' game and say, give me a B, give me a B, give me a B. What does that spell? Blah, 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 blah. So the fact that she was able to be that funny, but that much of an activist at such a young age is is just powerful. But we just realized you can't put that all in the story. You know, you get just enough for I'm hoping to put out some deleted scenes, you know. Well, we we, we got to know her a lot better and especially the fact that she's funny all the way to the end. So that that is excellent. Well, Par, I, I've also taken a lot of your time already. But uh, so what's up next? More more documentaries down the road? Uh, you know, I'm finishing up a documentary about a uh, food activist and farmer who is fighting against food deserts in North Charleston, South Carolina, and it's about her quest to own the land that she farms, and that's called Rooted. Um, we're putting the finishing touches on that. After that, I want to take a little break from documentaries, uh, uh, and I want to make a, a kids movie, uh, an action-adventure kids movie set in my neighborhood of Red Hook, Brooklyn, so... Uh, basically, I want to try to create as much joy while dealing with these difficult topics, because I think we need a little bit more joy out there. Well, it's excellent. And before, before I leave, I have one last question. Sure. So as, as people uh, watch uh, this uh, documentary, Sister Una Lives a Good Death, what is the one most important take you hope people walk away with? I hope people start having conversations about death and dying and get really honest and vulnerable in those moments and find that it doesn't need to be something that scares you. In fact, it's something that can elevate you, can unite you with other people. And if done with love, empathy, compassion, kindness, and warmth, it's something that will fulfill you more than you think it will. And it's important to um, for the, the people that you leave behind, if you're lucky enough, as Sister Una puts it, to know that you're going to pass away soon, as opposed to a sudden accident or something like that where it's unknown, well, take that time and really connect with people as much as you possibly can. So I hope people just have lots of good conversations with family and loved ones after this. And I, and I love this film because it, 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 it celebrates life or rather it celebrates death. So <laughs> <laughs> you've done, you done very well. So thank you very much, uh, Par. And once again, congratulations for Sister Una Lives a Good Death. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you so much.